My name is Mother Wanjiko Jabu. But everyone calls me Shiko. I chose to keep the name so that I don't forget where I've come from. This is where I grew up and we had a good life. I wish I posed those moments then. I remember I was playing over there and Mama Christine ran outside with the baby in her hands. She told me that I had a small sister. I felt excited, yes, but later on they told me that my mom didn't make it. At that time I was too young. I think way too young to understand. My father brought us up alone for some time. And then one day, one day he told me that he was going to bring us a new mom. I was excited. She would reward us with candy for very small deeds. She would go to the market, get us new clothes, new shoes. That was the best time of end month. We just, we loved her. I remember when they told us that they were going to have another baby. She made a lot of food. A few months after she had given birth to Kimani, now my small brother. My dad was posted to Mombasa indefinitely. And that for us is when life changed. We would work in the shamba, do all the house chores, while she visited with her friends. She was always at Auntie Jackie's place. I remember one time she burnt me with a hot spoon because of coming home late from church. Dad came home occasionally, and when he did, we were told to go to sleep very early and keep our mouths shut. Sometimes I wanted to run away and never come back, but my sister was very young. And for her edge to stay. I remember I was in home too, after the long break, the first lesson. The teacher on duty came to me. She told me I was needed at home. When I got there, I found our new mom and Aunt Jackie standing near the kitchen. She told me sarcastically to just go inside and see my dad, that he was around. He looked so thin, I could see it. And the first word he said is, you have to be strong. Because I was almost shedding tears. And he said, Shuko, you have to be strong now more than ever. He didn't want to get into details, but he told me to come close to him. He wanted to talk to me. And we talked for a while. Then he asked me to leave him to rest. At 9.15 PM, I went back to give him something to eat. And he was gone. He was so gone. My whole life flashed before my eyes and I wondered whether would we ever go back. We didn't go back to school after the burial of our dad. Njoki got married, so I worked in the farm from morning to evening and just tried as much to just mind my own business. I got a call from Simon, my brother-in-law. He told me that Njoki was in labor. So I rushed to the hospital at 3 a.m. in the morning. That's when the doctor came in. He kept quiet for a long time. Then he said she didn't make it. I don't remember leaving the hospital. I don't. But I remember I found myself in a cathedral, in a confession box. And I told the father to just bless me. I was sure that I was going to commit suicide. That one I knew for a fact. And we talked for a while. He prayed with me. And the villagers said that we were cast and I believed them. They had all died in my arms before my eyes and I was sure I was going to be next. But I was not going to die in that village. I made plans to go see Bibiana. I called the dad but his phone went unanswered. I decided to go in person. When I got there, as I knocked the door, 
I could hear some very faint cries. Out of curiosity, I decided to go check it out. She lay there next to the kennel. She looked so malnourished. And I just reached down, took her, and left the homestead. And by then, I was decided that I was going to go back to my house, pack the clothes, and leave. I walked for days, and I would stop and enter the, the hotels that were by the roadside and just ask them to give the baby food. In exchange, I was going to wash utensils. I got so tired one night that I just slept by the roadside. I was woken up by a very soft hooting. She kept asking what's wrong. I told her, hi, I will tell you what's wrong on condition that you give the baby food. She invited us to her house and she confessed to me that she was barren. So she decided to adopt her son and he was now living in the United States. She took us in like her babies. I took a, a short course in business and I was helping her. Jackson came back, but this time he wanted to live with his mom because he had gotten a better job. I decided to stay behind. But she stayed on condition that I run her business and I stay in her house. A year after she had left, the brother started threatening me and asking me to leave. I didn't listen. I kept working and Bibiana kept going to kindergarten. And one day I came home and she told me that she had been raped.